two, one. Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Soju Talk, your weekly shot at K-pop. This is episode four. We're, we're recording on Tuesday, August 28, 2018. And today I am joined by Warren. Hey, what's up, everybody? Jenny. Hey, this is Jenny. And Anita. Hello. And I'm your boy dog, Instagram.com slash dog92kim. Get at me. All right, so this is our fourth official episode, and good news is we are finally on all of the podcast distribution services. So, hey. iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, CastBox, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and of course our YouTube videos. And then after today's episode, we're going to have a post-podcast discussion of Produce 48 Episode 11. This is the last episode before the finale, and this is a YouTube exclusive, so check us out on YouTube. But on all platforms, please subscribe, like, favorite, rate, all those type of things. And today's main topic is going to be our K-pop journey. So we're going to be going um, a little into our our lives and how K-pop has affected it. I don't know how to put it, but you get the gist. But first, we're going to go over our big new releases for this week. And boy, were they humongous. So on August 24th, we had BTS with Idol. And the only other song that came out was today on August 28th. We had Shinwa with Kiss Me Like That. Yo, we got to talk about that BTS song. Oh, my yeah. goodness. <laughs> Wait, I actually didn't like the song. I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't. I did not like it. At what? All. I think I would say I was very. I was confused. I can't decide if I dislike it or like it. it what were? There's two what going on. That's the thing. Like it, it like, um, like it starts with one thing, and like changes the genre, and then adds like these like African drums, and then adds Korean shit, and I'm like, whoa. Yeah. What is the zoo? Like, National Zoo over here. National Zoo? <laughs> National Zoo? <laughs> oh my god. Wait, like, y'all didn't, me, though, y'all right? didn't like this? I liked it. I'm, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, ARMY. I did not like this. I do love BTS, though. It was, mm -hmm. The production was good. The music video was good. The editing team did a what? good job, but... The song, and then I've listened to it like twice, and I don't think I want to listen to it. You don't think this is good for the Western market, this song? Eh, it's okay. You know I mean, what I, I did like, know. though? You know what I did like, though? I really, really liked the music video. Yeah, the music video was good. I was um, really confused. I'm just confused. <laughs> there was, Wait. Like a There's a lot of different, like, meanings behind it if you look them up. Um... But the song, I guess it, it could be a good one for, like, Western marketing, but just for my personal taste, I did not like it. I mean, okay, so the song broke the record for the um, most ever views in the first 24 hours for a music video. Oh, it, had four, it had 45 million views, and it beat t t Taylor Swift's Look What I Made You Do, which had 30, oh oh, 43 million. So technically, is this crazy. is the most successful music video ever, if we're going on numbers. It is. It yeah. has 88 million views now. Yeah, it's, oh my God. it's, it's going bananas. Yo, props to BTS. They're yeah, they deserve it. I thought this was their fantastic baby. No, no. Really? Yeah. No. No? Uh, no. no. I've been, no. Wait, what? what? I, think, I think their fantastic baby was like, like DNA or like fake love. Hmm. I thought it was fire. Okay, I was a huge BTS fan when they first debuted. I even have their, their debut album, like, in front of me right now. But after, like, I Need You, I kind of fell off their hype train. Very mm -hmm. sorry. Don't hate me. Don't Wait, hate me. Y'all are, are falling off this hype train, but it's, like, never been higher, though. Yeah. Yeah, which is kind of ironic. Do you, but... do you, do you feel that that's because they're appealing more to a Western market than a K-pop market specifically? That could be a reason. For me, it's really like the song, the style, the music, their music style changed for me. Because they yeah, used to do like yeah, hardcore, or, like hip hop, like yeah, yeah. Them against the world kind no of No more theme. dream. Exactly. No more dream. We're bu Bulletproof Part 2. Oh my god, that's so good. Yeah, I love that song. Like, I don't know. They're I'm more... shocked. I'm shook, yo. Yeah. I did not expect this reaction from you three. <laughs> I told you to talk about how great the song was for like 20 minutes. Going along those lines, I kind of noticed that the song's not that popular in Korea. Really? Like, I never saw it on like the, uh, the real-time search rankings on Naver, and that's a good way to tell if the song is popular or not. Okay. 
if some other artist did the same exact song, I, like I would it be a really big hit? I think it's good because it's BTS. Mm-hmm. I I could see it as an NCT song. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. No. 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 Crazy. No, no, no. Crazy. All right, I am sorry. <laughs> Here's what I'll say though. Here's what I'll say though. Um, so. You got to think that this is like their second release that has the attention of the Western world, right? Mm-hmm. Outside of Korea. Yeah. This is the second song. Right. So this is honestly the, the most important song. Um, I've, I'm drawing a blank here. What was the last song called? Fake Love. Fake Love. Yes, Fake Love. So Fake Love got the world's attention, more or less, right? Mm-hmm. And this is the song that has to be the hit. And I think for a Western market, this is a, a like significant hit. Like, mm-hmm. this is at the... You got to think, this is at the level of like... LMFAO shots. I yeah, they, they collaborated with Nicki Minaj, right? Oh, hey, yo, I like the Nicki Minaj version. Yeah. I liked her version. It was really good. I also, her, yeah. I also know that they're doing one week of Korean promotions and then doing all American promotions after that. Yeah, I feel like this good. is definitely like a Western market kind of single. Yeah, it's definitely. That's why I'm looking at this not okay. I guess I should look at this more as a K pop lens because as a K pop lens, this is more of like, eh. But on a Western lens, this is a banger, I think. I, I feel like, I don't know, even on a Western lens, like, <laughs> damn, I mean. Damn, I'm just getting shit on over here. Yo, ARMY support me. Hey, <laughs> let's go. ARMY, okay, I love mom, you guys. My mom is a huge ARMY, and we've been fighting about this song, like, this whole, as soon as it was released. Does your love mom, it? Like, does she your loves mom? it. Yeah, see? Your mom's a smart well, lady, you know? No, but she's obsessed with... She's going to their concert next month, okay? She's oh really God. obsessed. <laughs> yo, yo. Can you okay, talk- is your, mo- your mom's in her 50s, I assume, right? No, she's like 49. But she's still into... The- oh, this is... That's yeah. great. What? Yeah, My obsessed. mom's into K-pop? But only through me, and it's not that intense. Mm. Oh, hers is intense. Mm-mm. I was like, huh, where did I get my fangirling from? Oh. <laughs> I see. <laughs> um, can we talk real quick about Shinwa though? Like, yes. My God. Okay. I like their song. Anita, Anita, Anita should go first. What do you think, Anita? I overall liked it. I feel like it was very classy. For I think it just suits them since they're more mature now. They Is old. It's gonna be their twentieth anniversary this year. Mm-hmm. So, All, I, like I, I thought the song was nice smooth and slow but the only th- I couldn't get out of my head that these are like late 30s early 40 year old guys <laughs> doing no. the yeah. song they're young looking for their like age I but. know yes. but I couldn't get it out of my head I like the song though but you know, I was like damn y- y'all you know, are like 39 <laughs> you know what I really really liked about this like in what? The, the earlier couple seconds of the music video when it's like a long cut and, mm-hmm. and, I'm sorry, a long take, and like the camera just moves along until it gets to that one guy. I don't know any of the names, by the way. Minu. Minu is it? Is it the, Minu starts like starts dancing. And everyone that's in the background starts dancing along. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I got a com- girl. I got a compliment. Oh, best scene ever. For older guys, right, mm-hmm. who are not in like the idol rap realm, I'll say. The rap was pretty good. I didn't find it that awkward. I thought oh. it was okay. <laughs> Chunjin's rap was just a little weird. Yeah, but I, yeah. I give him the benefit what about of the Eric? doubt. I mean, Eric just is Eric. He always raps like that. <laughs> I, Eric was good looking, so it was all yeah. good. We'll, yes. we'll, talk about this, we'll talk about this later, but I'm a, I'll talk about this later. But knowing where Amer- Korean rappers were like 10 years ago in K-pop, we, they're really good. <laughs> I think I think they've they come a the, long way. They did the smart thing and outsourced their rapping to someone who knew how to rap. It was pretty obvious to me, at least. Yeah, like the, yeah. the lyrics, at least, it wasn't too terrible. But you could tell that there's complete professionals at this point because they've been doing this for so long. Yeah, it yeah. felt very professional to me. Mm-hmm. Good fucking shit. All right, do we got any other things to say about BTS and Shinwa? Going once, going twice, sold. All right, so let's keep going. So <laughs> the show the show winners for this week. On, so there's normally six major shows, Show Champion, M Countdown, Music Bank, Show Music Core, Inkigayo on the show. This week, only four of them had broadcast. Um, due to, I'm, I'm, my guess is because of the Asia games that are going on. 
I mm. assume. Yeah, that's what it is. He was taking up the broadcast mm, space. Yeah, yeah. But it was another Red Velvet sweep two, two weeks in a row. Of course. Oh, yeah. so shit. They're up to nine wins for this song. And you got to think <laughs> that three of the shows during the last two weeks didn't broadcast that they probably would have won. So they could technically, technically be up to 12 wins for this song. Wow. Wow. Isn't this one of their most successful songs then? Yes. Not a flop. <laughs> Holy shit. I feel like, though, right now, there's not a lot of, you know... Uh, okay. artists out? Now that BTS came back, you know. They got they got lucky because they released right when the summer, like, everyone already released for the summer. Yeah. yeah, and, yeah, they, yeah and they yeah. released two weeks before Bangtan, which is a great time because everyone's scared to avoid yes, Bangtan. Yes, their timing was pretty good. Because in their mind, they were probably like, all right, so we're going to release, we could win two weeks, everything, and then we're going to lose to Bangtan. That's more or less probably what they oh, decided yeah. to do. Mm. I, have, I, have something, I have something to admit, by the way. Oh, oh. So, two episodes ago, <laughs> I made a comment about Red Velvet and their song not being really good. I really, really like it now. Hey! It took Told me, you! It took, it, it it took, took, took me one week. Two weeks. <laughs> it took me song. one week, and it took you two weeks to admit it. <laughs> my god, it took a long time, but now it, I, it just won't leave my head, not gonna lie. Okay, can I say something about Red Velvet? Yes. Of course. All right, so I'm on these, like, Korean community websites. And mm -hmm. of course there's you are. some controversy with Irene. Oh, oh of yeah. Of course, it's yeah. right after I talk about Irene in the last oh. <laughs> Basically, Hot gossip. Let's go. Yes, so they went on the, Red Velvet went on the show called Weekly Idol, and mm -hmm. they had to fill out... Um, I guess it was like their profile. They had to mm. fill out um, yes, yes. Like their hobby, like what they like to do, what they think of the members. It was basically like, uh, you know, almost like a survey so, thing they had to fill out, right? Yeah, they, they fill yeah. out a survey so that um, pretty much the host has something to go on and it's like talking points. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And all the other members, except Irene, they took their time to fill that form out. Okay, they actually wrote something. Like they took time to think about it and write something out. And Irene... She didn't write, she did write something, but it was very effortless. Okay, I, I know specifically what it was. So they asked, um, what are the members' dungeons or like good points about your mm -hmm. members? Mm -hmm. So everyone wrote like paragraphs and whatever. And Irene wrote, chakada, 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 chakada. Mm -hmm. oh. so she literally everybody. just wrote is like, is kind hearted, is kind hearted, is kind hearted, is kind hearted, is kind hearted for everyone without like, and like that probably took her five seconds to do. <laughs> And there was another part where they had to draw their brain, like what's inside their brain. Mm -hmm. And everyone wrote like five different things. And Irene literally wrote sleep and rest or something like that. That's like, mm -hmm. it was all she wrote. <laughs> but the, the interesting fact is that fans were actually getting kind of mad. Like they weren't really shielding her. They were like, oh yeah, they agreed. Like, yeah, that's kind of effortless. Like that's her job. That's her work. Like everyone's, you know, tired. So why is she effortless? That's what everyone's saying. Yeah, okay. So mm -hmm. there was like two resounding viewpoints. The first one was like, like, she's on the show. It's good exposure. You have to act up to the level that everyone expects, right? That was the right. first side. The other side was a lot of people understanding because of their work schedule and their workload and, and stuff. It's I I am on the fence about it personally. I mean the rest of the that but then the rest of the members didn't do that so. I know that's why it's it, terrible. It kind of makes her look bad, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it makes her look bad. That's that's what it is. And also, I mean, it, it doesn't help with Irene's image. Exactly. Yeah. Because like, she are, she already mm -hmm. has the the cool chic image where she's like the ice princess already. Mm -hmm. And to do something like this ain't a good look for her. Wait, no, I thought this went perfectly with their image. Because every time I see her on a variety show, she kind of just looks dead on the inside. Like, she had, like, a she, was on, she was a... she was a host on a fashion show a couple years ago, I think. And every episode, I would see her, and she would literally... She would look soulless. Like, and, like, very tired to do anything every week. You know? Like, this is, like... Oh, shit, come on. Like, the bad thing about this is that after this incident, like... Other people are probably anti. So they're gathering like Irene's, you know, 
like 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 first example when she's dancing on stage like she doesn't do one of the moves and mm-hmm. they're like oh like she's not trying but there's like not, it's not just one incident there's like a bunch of them and they're like putting it together and saying like oh like irene doesn't try mm-hmm. anymore and then i feel like that's a little is going too far but that's reaching that's, i think yeah yeah but that's what's going on right now man she like in my top three biases, and this really <laughs> makes me want to take her off of the list. It sucks. Really? Damn, really? Be- because, okay, so she's first team all face. We can all agree on that, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. She, she's really good looking. But it's like, I find it sometimes very hard to keep her on my bias list because of... <laughs> I wouldn't like her personality 90% 80% of the time is great right it's fine she's motherly to her members it's great but it's that 20% that really like bugs me Hmm. but we're gonna talk about biases in two weeks so I will think of my (laughs) my thoughts about this for two weeks but she's like trending downwards and Mm, and the other issue about that is for me so everyone you guys know my my like main bias is Sana right Mm-hmm. She's been trending downwards too, so it's, oh, yeah. I'm gonna and like Sejong's my my like probably my third, and I haven't I don't know where Sejong is, so she's trending down. So all Dude, my biases, era of change. all my biases are trending down right now. It's a mess. <laughs> Shit. But um, let's you know, uh, I don't know how to feel about this because best luck to Red Velvet. I hope. I, yeah, best luck to Irene. I, yeah. I, we don't want to hate her, okay? We don't. Red Velvet, Red Velvet's fine though, in general. Yeah, they're fine. They're fine. They, they're every, every, they always make fun of. They always find things to write about Irene that are bad anyway. And also, when the group is doing really, really well, there are always, you know, some controversy. Some people want to say bad things about them. It always happens when the group is doing well. So yeah, they they always either say like Irene's too cold, or they say like. Yeti isn't good enough. Those are the two oh, things they yeah. always. Oh, oh yeah. There's, there's, there's oh, another, another thing about Yeti. Oh my there's, gosh. there's another wave of those articles right now. Yeah. Again. She's not been in sync with the members for this past comeback. Like she's a little off mm. for a lot of the performances. I don't give a damn. I don't care. She's pretty. I know. I don't care either. Funny. But Jesus. these people, they're overreacting. Bullshit. But let's get into the main topic because. Yay. If we don't, Yay. we'll talk about Red Velvet for the whole show. Like, <laughs> yes, we possible. will. So we're going to be talking about our K-pop stories. Ooh. So how we got into K-pop, um, how we viewed K-pop throughout the years, and where we are now with K-pop. So let's see. How are we going to – what order should we go in? I think Warren should go last because he got into K-pop most recently, I feel. Mm-hmm. I think Doug should go first. Yes. I should go first? I agree. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right, all right, all right. So I'll start. So this is your boy, Doug. <laughs> I got I got into K-pop around 2007, 2008. So mm-hmm. about 10 years ago, I was 15 to 16 at the time. And for those listening at, no, at home who don't know me very well, I'm Korean American. My parents were immigrants, but I grew up in a very, lack of a better term, white area. So to, to, to explain that more. Okay, so I had, there were very few Asian kids in any of my schools growing up, I didn't have any real Asian friends until college, and I did not really speak a word of Korean until college. So completely whitewashed. And for me, K-pop has more or less been my entry point into like finding the Koreanness in myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. So the first K-pop song I ever listened to was Sonia Shide G. Great song. Man, you started off. Nice with start. <laughs> Bro, like, okay, so. Let's, let's, let's be straight up, bro. Like the puberty was kicking, right? Hey, yo. <laughs> I, was, I was confused about my identity a little by this point. <laughs> I was like, "Am I Korean? What is what is this? I know what kimchi is." <laughs> 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 I literally at this point I knew how to say I could, dude. I couldn't count to ten. <gasps> I knew maybe like five Korean dishes. Like I knew like bulgogi is tasty. I knew like <laughs> kimchi's a little weird. It's cold and sour. That's what I thought at the time. And I knew my grandma made good shike, and that was about it. Did you oh, eat shike. Korean food when you're <laughs> so I was like, I was so whitewashed at this point, right? I found Sonia Shireji. I was like, what is this world? Oh, also, side note, <laughs> at this point, I did not. F- okay, this is, this is, a, this is, we're, we're going to go deep today, I guess. At this point, <laughs> I thought. I did not think any Asian women were attractive at this point. 
Damn. Oh, wow. That's how, wow. Deep, that's how deep I was, bro. Hey. And then you saw G. What happened? I was like, why are they so pretty? <laughs> 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 I thought that, and I thought, why is this so addicting? This shit. And, mm -hmm. and you gotta think, I didn't know what the, I didn't know what the hell they were saying, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. I had no idea what they were saying. Second song I listened to was Dongbang Shingi Merotic. Yes. Ooh. Yes. And, and, and my thoughts were like, they're a little feminine, but they dance well. And <laughs> and because okay, so you guys know, but the viewers don't know. I have extensive dance background. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I did jazz and tap from 3 to 5. And then I did tap dance from 5 to 18. So extensive dance background. So I, don't, I can't do hip-hop or idol dance. I, I, I can basically keep to the beat, follow what they're doing. But I'm not a good dancer. But I saw them dancing, and they looked cool. And I was like, that's mm -hmm. so cool. Mm -hmm. I, was like, I was like, there's no way my hair is ever going to look like that. <laughs> but they're pretty cool. <laughs> And then the group that really got me that K-pop can be cool and not just feminine was Big Bangs. Uh, Big yeah. Bang, especially like Lies, Last Farewell, no. Haru Haru. Those songs, yeah. I was like, this is my group. This is, mm -hmm. this is it. I was like, so for a long time, I was a Sonia Shide fan for the girl groups and Big Bang group for the guy groups. And at my, at my room at my parents' house still, I have a Sonia Shide G poster, original poster. Mm -hmm. And I got mm -hmm. a Big Bang, Last Farewell poster on my wall still. Wow. And Classic. dude, to get those albums, I dragged my mother to H Mart about an hour away and they sold <laughs> albums there and they were like imported. And this was back when like it was hard to get stuff and they were like $35 each, if I remember correctly. Wow. Yo, that's expensive. But I was dedicated. And then by that point, I was so hooked. It wasn't even funny. <laughs> <laughs> so those were my beginnings. And then branching out. So from like when I was like 17 to 20. So now I'm decently into K pop. I listen to some mm -hmm. stuff started branching out and i realized that k-pop is not just about the music it's about the people right mm -hmm. like yeah you you, you like k-pop initially because you like the music but you stick around and listen to certain groups because you like the people in the groups so i started watching variety shows my first korean variety show i ever watched was chunchun Bupe, invincible youth mm. oh and isn't that the one with like all the girls yeah. It was a farming show that had Sonia Shida, Yuri, Sonny, mm, it had mm -hmm. Hyuna, Han Sonwa from Secret. Kuara. Kuara. Oh, uh, man. Ayu. Yeah, it had. No, Ayu was not on that. She was on a different show. Oh, my bad. But so that's when I started branching out. And then I became a huge. But speaking of Ayu, I became a huge Ayu fan about when um, Joe and Not a Good Day dropped. Mm. I was like, I was like, this girl is perfect. Good era. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then, the the and then right when Tiara hit their peak, is when mm. I got deep into Tiara. Roly poly, cry cry, <gasps> yeah. lovey lovey, day oh, by nice. day. Really good songs. Dude, if you, so listen to this run they had. Roly poly, cry cry, we were in love, lovey dovey, day by day, sexy love. Those were back to back wow. to back to back to back to back songs. And then, because I like Sonia Shide, I listened to their rivals, but I really found Kara endearing. Mm -hmm. So yes. Mr. Lupin jumping and snap. Yeah, yes. Oh my god. I was Love like, all those at this point, I was fully in. And this pretty much led me to the peak of my, like my first peak of my K-pop love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I was in college. I needed a language rec because we have to take four semesters because for y'all don't know, we all, we all went to the same college. That's how we met. Mm -hmm. But shout out to you, Mish. Go Blue. Please beat Notre Dame this weekend. <laughs> Go Blue. <laughs> Go okay. Blue. So I had to take four, year, four years of language, and I, tick, I took um, Spanish in high school, but mm -hmm. I was the, the first class, I, didn't, uh, I just like got through by memorizing, but I couldn't say one sentence. And then the second term, I got a, a lady named Hermana Linda, so she was a sister, and she basically just gave you an A for being in the class. <laughs> so by the time I was supposed to be in Spanish three, I spoke no Spanish. <laughs> So I went to, to Michigan and then we had to take four uh, semesters of a language. So I took Korean. So that was the first time I ever spoke any Korean in my life. Mm. And then that accumulated uh, to in my sophomore year. I took a trip to Korea for two months at uh, Sogang Day. And I went to Inkigayo. That was like the peak of my K-pop. And that was, so cool. that was the week Sai came back with Gangnam Style. 
Oh my god. Oh shit. So before I, I got up so lucky. So I didn't see the main performance. We saw the practices, but I saw when he was practicing for the debut stage of Gangnam hey. Style. So that was my, so my huge peak. And that was when I was full blown into K pop because first couple years of college, although it's busy, you got a lot of free time. I was mm -hmm. deep in it. I was taking Korean classes. So you know how you dive completely head in. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> After that, in my like junior, senior year, was the really the low point for me because life got busy. I stopped taking Korean. All that kind of stuff. The only really group that I liked at that point was Girls' Day. Other than the groups I already liked, because they had um, Expect, Female President, and something. And mm -hmm. I guess I was into the sexy concepts or something at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And I thought uh, Sojin was really pretty at the time. Mm. But after that, I was really getting out of K-pop until in my senior year of college, I joined our Korean drumming club at Michigan. Shinoboro, shout out to you guys. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> shout out and to that, Shinoboro. Come to our mass meeting. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, but I'll just keep talking because that makes no sense. So I got into Shinoboro, which is a Korean drumming club. First time I ever met Koreans. And of course, you hang out with Koreans, you got to listen to Korean music. So that's when I got really into Korean. And then I met you guys after a couple years. Mm -hmm. And now I'm super into K-pop again. Uh, Produce 101 was a big deal. That's how mm -hmm. me and Jenny became mm -hmm. friends. <laughs> 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 and then, all right. So at this, so around now, so I call that like the modern era. So like 2015 to now is my modern era. And that's like from ages 23 to 26. I'm 26. I'm old. No. These idols are way too young and it's kind of creepy, but, <laughs> Man, but, I think, but I think because I've gotten older, I view K-pop completely differently now. I only really care about a couple core groups, like mm -hmm. the core groups. Yeah. If I think about like my core group, it's probably Twice is definitely my main group. And then I was super into IOI because of Produce 101, but they went away, which is really sad. Never forget. <laughs> and I think for me, originally K-pop was more just like... You really liked the groups because of the music, but over time it became mm -hmm. you liked the groups because of the music and the kids, right? I call them kids because I'm pretty much older than almost everyone in mm -hmm. the scene now. <laughs> but now I think my view on K-pop is more as like an older, like I would, how do I put it? Like I feel not paternal, but like that kind of feeling towards <laughs> the kids because I now understand the industry and how backwards and mean it can be to these kids. Mm -hmm. And I kind of want every I want everyone to do well. I would say, mm -hmm. back back when I was deep in, it was like, oh, Sonia C is coming with the new song. I hope they beat this group, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not really like that. I kind of stand almost every group now because I understand for them it's a struggle, but it's their dream. So we should, mm -hmm. we might as well support them. And I think K-pop's a pretty big part of my life now. I listen to it like every day. We, we're doing this podcast, so clearly it's a big deal. Yes. <laughs> It's helped me become um, more in touch with my Korean side, even though mm -hmm. K-pop has good points and bad points. But it was like the gateway for me, understanding my culture. But and I would say overall, something that's really important to me. Uh, mm -hmm. That's pretty much my K-pop story in a nutshell. And Let's your story, go. your story is really wholehearted. Like you're very. Yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. amazing. What a story, yes. you know. Do you have any questions or comments? We could we could talk about, like real quick about the. First of all, I was, I'll was i explain this later, but I was out of touch with K-pop for, like, the early, like, 2012 and, like, 14-ish. I didn't know Girls' Day ever did a sexy concept. What? That's a thing. What? What? They always did a sexy girls concept. Day had, like, girls' Day had, like... They started cute, but... They had, like, three years yeah. where they, like, didn't wear clothing, bro. <laughs> yeah, the they heck? were on top of it. They were like they were like on the ground, like crawling up <laughs> the ground for like three years straight. Yes, and it was, it was Fuck, ridiculous. I need to I need to go check this out. God damn. Yes. <laughs> this, this this was like a peak girls' day. It was. Yeah, crazy. yeah. It was. Girls' day because they, they. Girls' day to me was always this like very cutesy girl group that was. Oh hell no! Full. They moved from that a, a while oh, after shit. that. They, they, they occupied occupied a very odd space um in between like Sonia Shide, Kara. Era and like the current era we're in with like Twice, Red Velvet, mm -hmm. Girls Day and like Sistar were like in that middle period. God damn! All right, I'll I'll explain more on this later. But what a surprise, pleasant one. What a surprise. But who else? Wait, okay. So, who who's your main main group you stand, Anita? 
Um, or who are you going to talk about the most? Who are you going to talk? Well, let me let's let's change it back. <laughs> How far back are you going to go? In terms uh, of uh, well, as far as introduction, like actively listening first ever is mm-hmm. 2011. And Jenny, how far back are you going to go? Uh, like preschool. All right, <laughs> let's, let's let Jenny go first then. Jesus <laughs> Christ. All right. All right. Jenny, <laughs> just go. Jesus. My Lord. Preschool. <laughs> what? Okay, okay. Hi, everybody. Jenny. Um, so I was born and raised in Korea until I was eight years old. And mm-hmm. our whole family immigrated here to America when I was like, when I was eight. Um, so when I was in Korea, I actually remember like watching, I think it was Music Bank or Inky Guy back in like, I don't know, like the 2000, like year 2000 and mm-hmm. Xinhua was Yay. there and this group called Yuan, they're a duo, they're a two yes, like, male yes. duo. Yes. So you need to know some, they had like really good songs. And I just remember like it's pre k me. I'm like five. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. sitting there like watching and I'm like, oh my God, like I want Xinhua to win. No. <laughs> And I would go to preschool and like talk about Sheena with my friends, and they were like, Aww. "Yeah, I know them too." Yeah, but that, I, I wouldn't really call that like fangirling. But I think that's if I have to really pick out my very first time with K-pop, I think that's it. But hey. preschool, yeah. I was talking about Pokemon. You were talking about K-pop. What the hell? Yeah, yeah, was, I I was there. Was your mom <laughs> into it, or was it you? No, my mom wasn't into it. I don't think I was into into it, but that shit is. I think that was my gateway. Now that I think about it, Dude, I think but, it runs in your genes. Like if your mom was into yeah. it, then that's all. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's family. definitely in my genes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when I moved to America, I kind of zoned out of this like whole Korean culture thing for a bit because you know I had to adapt. Uh, I had to go to school. I had to learn a new language. Mm-hmm. I had to make new friends. So K-pop wasn't really. You know, on my mind. English is so very, very hard. Yes, I, I couldn't speak English for like six months. Anyway, but one day my mom played this song called Lies by Big Bang. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. My I mom was, again. Wait. Yeah, I was imme- She was just like, oh, listen to this. It's like a really popular song in Korea. And I was like, all right. And then Wait, I was like, I'm so sorry, but I was like, I was like elementary school, like fifth grade. Um, and then the song was like, I'm so sorry, but I love you. And I'm like, <laughs> Oh my god, this is so catchy. So I Bro, fell in love. Me too. Yeah. So I started looking up the group and then top. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I know he's not really around right now. But <laughs> um, he was so good looking. I was like, oh my gosh, I love him. <laughs> Who is this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I stand at top like really hard. Okay. I think he was my first bias like ever. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And he then was I like first bias too. Oh, and then I like G Dragon, like his solo album, all that. And then I also also really like um, Girls Generation Wonder Girls, like on the side, like everyone mm, liked them, yeah. like Tell Me, like all those songs where it was yeah. like mega hits, mega. Shit, yeah. um, and then I had you know, I had small phases with Shiny. I really liked Shiny when they first came out. Mm-hmm. Um, and then okay, this is when like life hits me like a yellow school bus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my friend. My friend, who's now moved back to Korea, but she went to school with me. She introduced me to Beast. She was like so oh, obsessed snap. with them. Oh. Yeah, and I was like, I don't even know why you like them because I don't know. <laughs> like I was all like Big Bang. Mm-hmm. I was just curious. I was like, why is she so obsessed with? So I started looking up their music videos, and I was like, oh, okay. Like <laughs> I'm liking this. So I think the first song I probably listened to was Shock. Oh my oh, god! Every day, Shock. Oh, Shock. 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 <laughs> Shock is a great song. Their choreography is amazing too. Um, that's when I got into it. But then Beast was like my f- like first group ever that I started buying like the albums for. Or oh, I bought some Big Bang albums, but Beast is a, a group that I bought every single album for, including the limited edition. Still in my room right now. I have like a wall of just Beast posters laid out. Holy um, shit, that's a lot. Yeah. Um, my bias was Young Jun Young. I really liked him for a really long time. Uh, and then I kind of fell off with this group after um, Hyunsen left. Um, mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> but while I liked Beast, they were also, they were always my main. I noticed this cute little, little penguin-like boy. And his name was Dio. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and... After I met Dio, 
<laughs> oh <laughs> my god, him. your wordage there. What? <laughs> For the listeners oh. at home who don't know K-pop that well, Dio is from EXO, which is probably like yes. top three most successful guy groups ever. Yes, Dio's from EXO, and I was obsessed with EXO. Oh. I was obsessed with like, their very first song, because that's when I started liking Dio, the, when mm. they first debuted with Mama. And then what else did they mm. They had Wolf. Um, they had Growl. Growl was huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And this is when they had 12 members. Okay. Yeah. And oh, that's so... when. Yeah. It, that's, this is when it was the most hype. Yeah. For yeah. Everyone. Is and... the most they ever had? or? Yeah. It's the most they ever had. It's when okay. the group was full. So it was before all of the Chinese kids left. Yes. Yeah. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. That's when I really liked them. And that's when I started my um, Instagram account. Fun fact, I have a Dio fan account. I will not say what the username is, but <laughs> but this account made me go to college, okay? Because I wrote an essay, application essay about this account. <laughs> oh my God. And I got into you, Mish. So <laughs> thank you, Dio. Like, you sent me a <laughs> Okay, and next is Icon. So this was like somewhere before I got, got went to college, and this mm-hmm. is before Icon debuted, and there were all, and there's all these survival shows. Who is next? Mix and Magic. Yeah, yeah. Show uh-huh. Money Three. And I was really like, I just really wanted them to debut, but they lost to Winner, and they had went through like so many survival shows. So it really like it was really sad for me. But I think for me, it's like I really like the group when they're going through some hardships. You know, I feel like I like them before they get super super famous. And then mm-hmm. I kind of transferred to a different group. I know that sounds really bad. No, no, you. I know. I get that. You like the yeah. struggle. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I, I want to like help them. It makes me like them mm-hmm. more. You know? r- r- like right now, Warren and I are there with Uju Sonyo. We're like in the. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Shout out to mm-hmm. Cosmic Girls. It's like Twice yeah. is doing so well. It, you know, you know what I mean. Like it, it just they just attract you. Mm-hmm. So I liked Icon, and then that's when I went to college, and I was very very busy my freshman year um so i kind of you know i kind of fell off the k-pop hype train that's like the first year ever in my whole life that i didn't really pay attention to k-pop um and then i liked got seven a lot for a while i know it's a lot i already yeah. I went to like two concerts and anyway i love got seven um and then okay okay and then last year <laughs> there was a show called produce 101 season two <laughs> and Park <laughs> bujin like became mm-hmm. my son i needed to what? my son jesus christ yes i had to vote for this boy for him to get into 101 and guess what he started at 76 he started at the bottom and he ended up with number six okay he made it and it's because i, I say i took part in it okay <laughs> <laughs> i voted every day i was like writing like uh posts about him uploading pictures you know sharing videos i was doing all that crazy stuff and now because of him um i stand 101 i went to their concert last month and mm-hmm. right now my my heart lies with 101 so i'm a <laughs> one ball oh the end God. i don't even consider myself a once to be honest i'm not yeah, too, i'm not too deep into anything i don't think i'm honestly like okay but Overall, like, the group that I fangirled the hardest for was Beast and EXO. Like, 101 is nowhere close to, like, my fangirlingness back then, I would say. So I'm assuming it kind of, like, kind of toned itself down once you came to college. Is that, am I getting that right? Yes, that's exactly right. Like, college got really busy for me, and it's I like started sp- making friends. So I was like, oh. Like, it's, I like can- sp- it's like spurts, though, because, like, yeah. We, yeah. like you watched it when you hung out with me or like when we watched produce 101 yeah like, here's, uh, so funny story for the viewers at home you guys know the story so our our drumming thing we have like <laughs> these two retreats the first one is a fun one. Second one is supposed to be practice because we have this annual concert it was on a friday and of course produce <laughs> airs on fridays so i torrented the episode while i was in mm-hmm. class using the internet from my phone as a hotspot <laughs> because I can't use the school's internet because torrenting's illegal. I used up all my data to torrent the episode <laughs> for that month. Oh my god, you're crazy. And then we went and we watched this instead of bonding with the rest of our team. <laughs> yes. Doug and I, we watched the whole episode. Yeah, well, we should have been practicing for our concert. <laughs> you know, I remember looking at 
the group of you guys, because I wasn't really into K-pop. Well, I kind of mm-hmm. was, but I wasn't into Produce back then, and I was watching you guys, and I thought it was the most, like... I thought Bro, the but you get it now. Was. I'm, I'm <laughs> balls deep into this shit now, and I'm like, yeah, I should have done that. Why didn't I do that earlier? That oh, okay, I want to say something. So, like, for me, I always wanted to talk about K-pop with someone growing up, but... Like, you know, I didn't really have friends like that except for my sister. So I was really happy when I joined my our drumming club because I found people like you guys to talk about Aww. K-pop with. So, hey. yeah. <laughs> so that was really great for me. I should make that audio clip our promotional material and, dude, everyone's going to join. Holy shit. Yeah, you yeah, should. You yeah, should. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I the one thing between me and Jenny is Jenny sometimes gets deep into this stuff <laughs> like i'm always like i'm always because you, you guys know me i my, i switch which group i like like every month right yeah <laughs> i'm never super deep but jenny is deep it's like when Dio <laughs> came into my life my life was finally complete like <laughs> damn but I, re- I respect that i get that yeah. I wish I could get that deep into it, but it's a little d- different as a dude, though, especially when you're, like, older than them. Right, right. I mean, it's not, to me, it wasn't just, like, you know, a K-pop yeah. group. They were literally, like, my idol. Like, I grew up with them, you know? And yeah, they were yeah. always there for me. When when I had a bad day, they were always there. I just watched their music oh, video yeah. and happy again, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, so, yeah, like, for me to not be creepy, it's like, I don't want to be the creepy uncle. I want to be that cool, supportive uncle who goes out and buys, like, spoils you and buys you shit. You know what I mean? Like, your yeah. cool uncle, not the creepy uncle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but I think Anita should go next because she's also... Me. Kind of... Okay, so for, for for you guys who don't know, uh, Warren, Jenny, and I are Korean, and Anita is Mexican. Yep. And, uh, but Anita has the most... <laughs> Vast knowledge of K-pop, I've like, it's the most surprising <laughs> thing ever. <laughs> Walking dictionary yes, over here. Yes, like, It's ridiculous. So I need to get into your story because I personally don't know how you know so much. <laughs> ridiculous to me. Okay, okay. So it all started through a friend of my sister, actually. Um, she went to like a school program because we didn't go to the same school but she went to a program after school and that's how they met and she mentioned to my sister uh, a group and she told her like check them out they're really cool and that group was super junior oh, um, Wait, yeah so it was 2011 and I think it was uh, September October um, so they were they came out with Mr. Simple at the time Oh. Uh, yeah, so it was it was a pretty big deal for them because uh, it was one of their biggest comebacks. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, ha- I mean, I had no idea what they were saying. It was it was so it was so weird for me because I guess I had no introduction to Korean culture at all at the time because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um, I'm from a town where there's not a lot of um, Asian Americans or just a lot of diversity. It was it's predominantly white um uh so i had no clue what to expect or what i was seeing um but i guess when i really think about it i it, super junior wasn't really the f- the first group that i had seen it was the first group that i really got to know mm-hmm. but the first group that i had seen was to anyone because oh yeah um, oh, i think the queens yeah i think during that time they had also come out with some really big songs um uh, like i think i saw clap your hands yes, I think, yeah, yes. I think clap your hands. um and but i i didn't really think much about it i didn't really know what they were saying um so i i just saw it once because it was on youtube and it was recommended or something um and then when i think even further back i i saw a video um and it had like background music, mm-hmm. but it was DBSK, uh, Purple Line. Hey, yes. Purple Line! It was Purple Line, but it was it was in Japanese. Oh. Yes, so yes. It was a Japanese version of the song. So I I I had thought at the time that they were a Japanese group, because I I knew oh. a little bit more about Japanese music uh-huh. before then. Um, so that's what I thought of them at the time. But I'll get back to them later. So the first group that I really got into was Super Junior. Um, and I don't know, I feel like it was, it took me a couple listens 
to really get into the song, Mr. Simple, but it felt almost like it was kind of like a routine. Like every time after school, I would just go back to the video and watch it. Oh. And I was like, oh, this is really cool, actually. Like I like the dance. <laughs> and... Yeah. Wait. What's on? No, no, no. Oh. Martin was like, oh, shit. Oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I really liked the dancing, I think. That's what really got me into it. And uh, after watching that video, um, there was another song that was recommended that was the Chinese subunit. Um, oh my god. <laughs> Super Junior M. Yes. Um, and they had Supergirl? Was that? Yes, I think that was the uh-huh. title. Uh-huh. Um, and so I watched that one and I was like, "That's this is pretty good too. And I think, I think at the time I... I really, really like Dongye. I was like, oh, he's really, no. really good looking. <laughs> good looking. He, he is. Does. He no. is a good looking I acknowledge guy. his good looking face. Wait, yeah, the so... guy that uh, left? No. Huh? Oh, wait, no, never mind. He's, no, he's Warren. A... <laughs> he came back with, uh, yeah, with he, the he, new he came back last week. Yeah. Oh, shit, I'm sorry. <laughs> so okay, so... I, can't, I can't keep track. <laughs> Apologize. Yeah, so could... I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Elf. I'm sorry. That is not Elf. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that was another thing. I, I wasn't really aware of groups having fandoms at the time. Mm-hmm. So when I looked at the at the YouTube video and I looked at the comments and I saw like Elves and I was like, who is this? Like, what are they referring to? Like E L F. Like I was so Ever. confused. Yeah, Everlasting so, friends. Yeah, yeah. Can, can I make a, a, a embarrassing? Oh, uh, like, I thought that fed cafes were real cafes for a while. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> like you actually oh, went? that's cute. That's kind of cute. Okay, uh-huh. so okay, so a fan cafe is more or less like a forum where the the fan club of a certain group like does their forumy stuff, right? Uh-huh. But mm-hmm. I thought that every big group had like a physical like cafe where <laughs> they oh like god. fans hung out. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought for like two years, dude. That's creative. <laughs> That's kind of cute. I was like, yo, I, know, what the heck? I could visit the fan. Because like, if you think of it, if your group has a fan cafe, then everyone who goes in there, you already have something in common with them. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah. Right? I think that a group should actually get a physical fan cafe. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that would be really cool if, if that's a real thing. You know what? Twice has their own cafe now, so that's the thing. There you go. But All right, continue. Continue, because I'm 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 an idiot. <laughs> no. Um. So. Uh. So yeah. So then I got into more of like, the extra stuff that, Super Junior did. So like their variety shows and just guest appearances and other shows like Star King and oh, X Star King. Yeah. X Men. <laughs> yeah. So I think what was weird about. Me and I guess my sisters who also got into the the music when we discover it together um, was that we because we saw it on YouTube um, and thankfully there was older videos previous to the the current mm-hmm. song that they had released so I think we we instead of like focusing on what was really popular now we started to go really deep into Super Junior, but like from like 2004. <laughs> so like really way back. What was the first um, song you liked from them, Super Junior? Uh, Mr. Simple. Yeah, so that was after Sorry Sorry, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, like, snap. Sorry Sorry was peak too. Wow. Yeah, so we kind of went back in yeah, yeah, their yeah. history and their discography and everything. Um, and I think like the most memorable show that I watched with them was this variety show they had. Um, where it was basically, they would do experiments about the human body. It was called the Explorers <laughs> of the Human Body. Oh my um, god, you actually know about that? What the- yes, it was Bro, so Bro, she knows funny. everything, dude. She dude, knows I, everything. I grew up watching that, oh my- It was so funny. And yeah, so I don't know, someone uploaded the videos with English subtitles because we still didn't speak Korean, so uh, it was so funny. And then there was another variety show that was even- better or more relatable because uh it was uh i don't remember the title uh, right now but it was basically super junior um 
taking care of these two foreigners that were studying Korean. Um, so they were staying over at the dorms with them, or like staying over with them, and they would do like games and introduce them to Korean culture. And it was really interesting. Um, so yeah, that's, that's those were the two variety shows or reality shows that I watched with Super Junior. And that kind of solidified um, like my liking for them. And mm-hmm. then... That show was called Full House. Yeah, yeah, Full House, Full House, yes. yes. Um, but it was it was so good. It was so funny. Like, just Super Junior as a whole is so funny. Like, they're so good at variety. So yes, I just kept are. watching them. And then I think within that same year, 2011, uh, towards the end, um, there was other groups that were recom- uh, that came up in your recommendation on YouTube, um, but they were all from SM. So the first one that I saw after Super Junior was um, Shiny. It was oh, yes. Lucifer. Yes. Lucifer. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, so then I, I guess I was still not quite used to like the sound of K-pop. Like it still mm-hmm. sounded really interesting to me, and but the choreography was so good and Shiny. Chinese choreography for Lucifer is was next level to me. Yes, so yes. I thought like this is this is. I I thought Super Junior was really good, but I feel like Shiny, Chinese oh, choreography was, like, on a different level. So, I started listening to Shiny even more, and just as Super Junior, I, I looked, I went back to their previous stuff, and I also went back to their variety reality TV shows, um, and I guess my favorite one, the one that I. I treasure the most is uh, I think the Korean title is Yunanam. It's it's where they had uh, older Korean women um, go oh, on like on a wait, date I know what this is. with oh. one of the <laughs> with okay. one of the oh. members, um, and uh. so they oh, they they go together. They spend some time together, and then they choose one member that they want to spend time with specifically. Lol. <laughs> this yeah, is just it was just a straight up dating show though. Yeah, but it was so funny. And um, so I, I watched that and I really liked Shiny. And I guess Shiny overall just became the group that I just came coming back to because I just really like all of their songs. I went back to like their first album, their debut album, Shiny World, and I listened to all of it. And then I went to like. And who's Amigo. your favorite member? Huh? Who's your favorite member? Um, <laughs> well, Okurochi, continue. Oh, yeah. So, so then I, I started listening to Shiny and I really got into them. And I would say that they're probably like one of the core groups that I still listen to even today. Um, and yeah, so that was so that was towards the end of 2011. And then around that same time, um, there was talk of a new group uh, by SM called EXO. Oh. So, <laughs> EXO. EXO, yeah. So at around that time, they started releasing teasers. And oh, yes. Yeah. So we really got into the hype. My sisters and I got into the hype of EXO, and we were keeping up with the teasers. And we were like listening to the songs that were being released with the teasers and the new members. Um, and we were really into that. But I think while EXO was beginning to debut or getting ready to debut, I started listening more to uh, DBSK because just as I discovered Shiny, they came up as a recommendation. Um, so I, I think the first song that I saw by DBSK was Erotic. Uh-huh. Hell yeah. Yeah. So again, the dancing and then the singing and everything. So I got into DBSK and then I started watching um, their older stuff. Like their debut. You're, you're so different than me because I generally like once I start liking a group, I only go forward. Mm, yeah, yeah, you go backwards. You go backwards, which is very <laughs> odd. There's a another. I'm, I'm gonna make a shout out. Shout out to everyone who subtitles stuff. Yes. For like, yes. So I'm I'm like I can listen to Korean very well, but at this point, I'm still not fluent in speaking it. But subtitles are a godsend because a lot of the time you're listening to music you got to look it up because we have absolutely no clue what they're saying and shout out to anyone who's subtitles because it's the it's the best thing yeah 
also, in, Anita is like, I like how Anita is completely down for a group and she sticks with them because that's so opposite to me. Like, <laughs> respect. Respect. I, I'm like a flavor of the month type of guy. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> continue. Yeah. Yeah. So I think my my peak of like listening to K-pop was like 2011, 2012 yeah. when I discovered those groups. Um, but I I guess in general after that I like I was listening to Super Junior, I was listening to Shiny, DBSK, and then just I guess smaller groups that were pretty new at the time like. I remember listening to Teen Top a lot. Um, oh, well. <laughs> Teen Top, and then... Shout out to like, Neil's lips. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I think, uh, like, B1A4, those kind of groups, like, Beast, I listen to Beast. Um, and then, like, the bigger groups, like, Big Bang, and... But you, you generally just stick with your cores, though. Hardcore. Yeah, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like I'm just... Like, I would know, like, what's new now, but I would... the 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 groups that I would really listen to were still like Shiny, Super Junior, DBSK. And then it wasn't until like college that I got into newer groups. Um, uh, I guess one of the bigger ones being NCT. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Group of SM. Um, and then like, I guess during freshman year of college, I really got into Tex Keys. So... They're from the '90s. <laughs> Jesus Christ! So they're not. They're not very new, but they had like a comeback. They renewed their contract in 2015, 16. So they were they were getting back into the the entertainment. Um, yes. So I kind of got into them, and then like went back and watched all their stuff too. Um, but yeah, so I guess it's those are the the core groups for me at the moment. Anita, um, you loyal. I respect that. <laughs> You're SM biased. Yeah, you're yeah, also super yeah. SM biased. I, I never realized it, but I, I kind of stuck with just groups from the same company. You know? and, okay. and and would you say that you like like some of the modern groups, but you definitely, your number ones are still the older groups, right? I would assume. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I still listen to, I think, the one, the one group that I feel like I really got into, other than like... Uh, as some like groups, DBSK, Shiny, Super Junior, was GOT7. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I really liked them at the time. I listened to all their songs, the debut album. But yeah, my my core groups are still the same. Awesome. And let's let's go to Warren because his is the weirdest story. <laughs> the least traditional. So. My story, yeah. I assure you, will, you will never hear from another person. All right. Cool. Don't get it. <laughs> all right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about... I my my times kind my whole K-pop career kind of um kind of splits off into three eras, right? Like and I, I call it the ancient era, <laughs> the middle ages, and the renaissance. Oh my. What? <laughs> <laughs> We're all history shit over here, right? All right, all right. All right go. Let me begin with my ancient era. So my father, for my birthday, <laughs> bought me an MP3 player, right? It had a it had a mm-hmm. it had a huge screen. It was one whole inches. I had a screen. That's, that was crazy. I got my music subscription. I could download music. I went fucking ham. I just started downloading all the popular songs. That's how I got Escape Up initially. And you guys might think this wasn't a big deal, but I was into some weird ass shit. And mm-hmm. back then, I was into, you know, I was into Big Bang. I was into K pop. I was into Girl Generation. I was kind of like casual, but there was a, there was a certain ticking point, I think, after Genie. That mm-hmm. got me into Girl Generation, and I remember I, I remember I remember this very distinctly um, in Korea. So yeah, back then I was in Korea, right? And I was just a normal Korean kid. And in Korea, especially in the cities, there's a fuck ton of like phone stores in the city. Mm-hmm. I would go store to store to get the limited edition booklet that has Chocolate Love Girls' Generation photos. Oh my oh, god. I love wow. Chocolate Love. I hate Chocolate Love. Because what? Was- Why? What? <laughs> Fuck Chocolate Love. War song. War song. What? Anyways, um, I remember going store to store looking for this booklet, and I remember I got it at the end. And by the time O came out, I was like buying their album, mm-hmm. Run Devil Run, I was like fully on the hype train. Um, and I was like, I was also listening to some like, some really weird shit. Because I was watching the weekly music shows at this point. Mm-hmm. Like, 
nobody ever, nobody ever is gonna talk about this, so I'm gonna mention it now. I used to be really, really into Chegoge Aizu, Zia. Their debut song. Who was your favorite? Oh, I don't really have a favorite. Oh. Is that the song that? Is the song that goes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? Oh my Thursday? God, yes. Dude, <laughs> literally, the lyrics are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Tuesday, Wednesday. <laughs> It's addictive. So, Jigook <laughs> Idol are like a group who, I don't. They were like stuck in the mid tier for their entire career. They were never big. But the individuals in the group, some of them got pretty big, like Im Shiwan and mm -hmm. they were big as actors. Yeah, they all became like a lot of them became actors or entertainers. But the music itself never really took off. Yeah. But anyway, if you're listening to this right now, go check out Mazel Tov. I hope it's on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think it is. <laughs> Now, um, it's so good. It's good. But anyway, at this time, I was like, I wasn't a normie. I wasn't a casual. But I was, mm. I was like, not a hardcore K-pop fan. But I was like, still in there. If I stayed in Korea longer, I probably, I probably would have joined Soa at one point, which is their official fandom, and you gotta pay for that shit too. Which is, oh my god. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember like for my PE test, I had to dance Heartbeat by 2 p.m. Oh, well, is there a video? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, they took videos, but I have no idea where it is anymore. There's a DVD of me dancing to Fantastic Baby out in the wild. Oh my god, I gotta find that. <laughs> um, I, I, one of our mutual friends has it, but continue. So, uh, interestingly, at the time, also, I really, really got into Korean rap and hip hop. And I'm mm -hmm. too deep into this shit, because that's mm -hmm. not what it's about. But I started getting into you know, like Lee Sung, Dynamic Duo, Dragon Tiger, Supreme Team. Um, there was an underground company called Soul Company. Mm -hmm. These were like, this was my fucking. I honestly stand them. They just went K pop. They were just. Mm -hmm. And nobody from that company is still around anymore except The Quiet, who runs Illinaire. So, yeah. So that happened. And then I moved from America. Sorry, no, I moved from Korea to America in 2011. And when that happened, I had to change music services. And long story short, I had to <laughs> delete all the songs on my music library. Dude, that's the no! sad. That's, that was before streaming too, I assume, right? Yeah, it was, so it sad. was before streaming. So, so no more, I, I was super into Beast, by the way. I was mm. no more Beast, no that's more Big Bang, right. no more Girl Generation, no more 4 Minute, nothing. Aww. And I was really, really getting into hip hop. So I started downloading a lot of hip hop songs. I started getting really underground. Now, um, <laughs> so this is where my middle ages begin. <laughs> Puberty kicked in, completely different from the way Doug did, right? I, the, I'm really embarrassed about it right now, but... <laughs> Not as embarrassing as me, dude. <laughs> like a hipster kind of mindset, kind of kid. Uh -huh. And I was like, yo, like, K-pop is not art. I'm oh, shit. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. it's just mainstream trash. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I was like. Life, bro, K-pop is life. And for that, for those four years, and that's why for those four years, I have, there's like a blank history of what happens in mainstream K-pop. Tiara for me ends in Bo Beep, Bo Beep. <laughs> wow. Goalie Poli, I heard that song after like 2015. What? Oh my God. <laughs> Crazy. You know, like, show me the money was going on. So, like, and, like, that was, like, another thing. So, that happened. And then I came to college, right? And mm -hmm. Colin, sorry, college is, like, an interesting time. I joined the club. It happens to be about Korean culture, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I kind of expected it, you know, coming in. But there was a lot of K-pop going on. There was a lot. <laughs> and what uh -huh. aspect of it was, like, every meeting before the meeting... There would be K-pop playing like a music video. Yeah, <laughs> and I had I had no idea what the fuck I was watching, but there was this really really short haired girl that was really really. Oh, my God. <laughs> she met Bay. She was Jonghyun of Twice. I know. Aww. And then I started listening to Twice outside of the club. I would go back to my dorm. My roommate and I would start humming it. <laughs> and then I got I slowly got back into the, you know like K-pop, and then by like. Spring, you know, like the end of the first year, I was like, I was just like listening to a lot of K-pop, um, and that's kind of. Hey, it's our fault, isn't that? it? <laughs> it's our fault. And another interesting thing, I think. Well, I and I think it's your fault too. But like another thing was that like 
prior to coming into college, I was listening to a lot of like depressing, like nihilistic, like rap. Oh my god! <laughs> like, Jeez. like the anecdote by Ethan is one of my favorite albums of all time, and that shit fucking made me cry when I first listened to it. <laughs> oh my god! It was it was great, but this wait this this is really interesting, right? Because the main producer of that album actually produced a bunch of SN songs. He there you go. to make automatic um time slip by Red Velvet. He's still active. He made um, uh, Mosquito on the new album and Perfect Ten and Look on the uh, Perfect Velvet album. And then mm. the rap maker um, who, who, who made the rap verse for Red Velvet and um, Ice Cream Cake and Dum Dum, uh-huh. the, the only featuring artist in that anecdote album. So, like, hmm. I was like, it was like, I think like March or April when I was like digging through like the credits and I found these like connections. And I started listening to a lot of Red Velvet that summer. Mm. I think those two are like kind of how I ran back into K-pop. And uh, you know, like I would, I, I think like that summer too, I got into Cosmic Girls. Cause like, mm. I was like listening to an online radio um, in my research lab. Cause I was working in a research lab that summer. And then this girl on the online radio starts humming this song. And it's like, oh yeah, what a bop. Good song, good shit. And then, <laughs> all right, this was The Secret by Girl, uh, Cosmic Girls. And I was like, all right, mm-hmm. I should check this out. Bro, and I go on YouTube, you and I checked it out. And it was a great fucking bop. Um, <laughs> I don't know, like, I feel like that kind of sums it up. Now, I'm just, I feel like every day I'm getting deeper into this shit. Like, Dude, months, you're, like you're deeper than me at this point. I think so, yeah. Like, last couple of months, I was, like, balls deep into Produce. Like, holy shit. <laughs> But we'll save that for our post podcast discussion of Produce yeah. 48. Mm-hmm. You guys got any questions? I, this is an interesting lifestyle for me. Okay, I think it's interesting how you look at it from more of like the music perspective, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. Yeah. The, and yeah. I think it's interesting how Anita looks at it from like uh, like a dance perspective. Cause oh, yeah. Yeah. She's a really great dancer. And then no. it's interesting how Dog looks at it from like his culture changing, like his getting to know his Korean side, his gateway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's just interesting how like we all look at it differently. Dude, but Jenny and I are the most similar. Now it's about like the people. <laughs> Definitely. That's about the people. Okay, yeah. I'm really sorry, but I totally forgot about 2 p.m. Like 2 p.m. was like, oh, yeah. me too. Oh yeah, 2009 heartbeat. was all 2 p.m. Oh my god, heartbeat. Mm, yeah. Um, again and again. again and again. Oh my god. Um, everything. Okay, I'll be back. But... I'll be back. <laughs> I'll be back. Okay, see, but when Jay Park left, uh, my my mm. hype was over. Over the end. It was like the oh. quickest ending ever. I think. No. <laughs> I think the main takeaway is like. Everyone gets into K-pop in completely different ways, and yeah. everyone. I think the the main thing I learned was that everyone views K-pop completely differently. That's mm-hmm. one thing that I did not expect. But yo, shout out to my PE testing group back <laughs> in grade. I remember we took that you know heartbeat <laughs> test together, and we got a fucking seven. She was lit. I know one of you is still listening because I'm still touch. I'm still in touch with you. So oh, oh. oh. but um. I'm going to move on to the, the news from last week. I got a lot of them, so we're just going to go through them pretty quick. And then we're going to wrap up and get to our post show because I need to talk about Produce. It's killing me. <laughs> oh my but the uh, first one was Cube Entertainment confirms that Edon and I don't know how to pronounce his name. I'm going to go for it. Yanan are taking Yenan, hiatus. Yanan. Yanan. Pen- Yanan are taking yes. hiatus from Pentagon. Hey! <laughs> so oh. is... So I know Edon's taking a break mm-hmm. hiatus because of the whole dating scandal. Mm-hmm. And then is Yenon? It's because of health, right? Yeah, health oh. issues. Yes. Yeah. But I hope that both of them get back in the group because health issues. I hope he gets he overcomes it, of course. And the dating issue, I don't think it's really an issue. Yeah. But con- let's continue. So Bang Young Gook leaves BAP and TS Entertainment. <sighs> oh, TS, TS. Is this still a this thing? Uh, no, this is the good. this is the like nail in the coffin because he was the main guy. He's the so, leader. We're eventually going to talk about BAP in the future as one of our main topics in the category of groups that should have been bigger. Oh, the, yes, yes, yeah. And this is just super unfortunate because he's super talented. Their group was supposed to be the competitor to EXO when yep. it came out. Mm-hmm. And it just never worked out because of terrible management. But 
Little sad. Yeah, they have a lot of problems. Like, but mm-hmm. we wish lot. him all the all the world because we know he's super talented specifically. Yeah. Uh, he number, went through a lot. Yes. Nope. The next one, Jellyfish Entertainment confirms report of new boy group. Hmm. What? That, dude, hmm. Vix, what what's gonna happen to Vix? <laughs> Yo, what's okay, going to happen to Kugodan? Yeah, because yeah. okay, so, um, Jellyfish Entertainment is like a tier 2 to tier 3 group. They, I mean, tier 2 to tier 3 company. They're not that hot. They're struggling with Kugodan. Vix, they're all becoming army age. And now they're going to release a new boy group, even though they're struggling. I don't know what's going to happen. Crazy town. But we'll have to see. Wait, are you guys still here? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I thought y'all were really <laughs> silent. I was like, what happened? <laughs> All right, but uh, the next one, EXO to release a regular and repackaged album as a full group, plus Yay! Red Velvet and Taeyeon to make comebacks before the end of the year. So we're going to get an EXO full release, we're going to get a Red Velvet, another full release, and we're going to get a Taeyeon release. That's too uh, lit. That's too lit. Yeah. <laughs> what an SM party. I'm, I'm hyped for all of that in general. Like, mm-hmm. It's going to be great. And then the next one, another SM news. Um, Girls' Generation mm-hmm. unveils the new members of the U- new unit OGG, and that one has the remaining members who are still at SM. So it is Taeyeon, Sunny, Hyoyeon, Yuri, and Yuna, and they're going to also have a variety show that accompanies this. Hmm. So mm-hmm. SM's trying to s- still milk the Sonya Shide cash cow for, for yeah. more money, and I- I'm okay with it. I like them all. Yeah, I'm excited for this. I, I still personally... think. Sorry, go for it. I still think that they have the fan base to, to pull something oh, off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I personally think their name is stupid. Like... OGG. It, no, their unit name isn't OGG. It's Girl Generation OGG. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's a lot of syllables, <laughs> man. Like, what the hell? <laughs> okay, I'm not a fan of that name, then. Oh, my goodness. Stupid. Okay. But lastly... Happy news, EXID reportedly making a full comeback yay, with Solji in the fall. Yay, yay, yay. So, I'm so happy because Sol- Mama Solji's finally back. She's healthy. Mm-hmm. She's she ready to kill it. All right. But that's all the news we have. I'm going to do the upcoming releases real quick. And then, so upcoming releases September 3rd. So that is what day of the week is that? I just lost my place. September 3rd is a. September 3rd is next Monday. We have NCT yeah. Dream with We Go Up. Mm-hmm. We Yay. have Beck Person like. with Sunshine. And then Wait, the- this group still exists? Apparently they do. Wow. I've never heard of them. <laughs> and then on September 4th, which is next Tuesday, we have Sun Me with Warning, going to be humongous. Ooh. And then we have uh, Puck Jimin, who's coming back with Jimin X Jamie. And Jamie's her... English name apparently. Yeah, yeah she's finally up. coming back. She's yes. finally coming back after yes. like talking so much crap yes. about JYP out in the public. So, <laughs> and then, yo, sometimes you just gotta keep complaining till something happens. So, shout out to her. Is but, this like uh, Jimin of AOA? Like, who is this? No, no, no. This is Jimin oh, from 15 and oh my who's gosh. the solo singer. She, she oh, won K-pop this... star season one. Yes. Oh. Oh, first of all, I'm sorry for not knowing. <laughs> so, Warren, your homework this week is to look up. So her Please history. watch her. Um, what is it? Somewhere over the rainbow. Is she yeah. in the duo with Yerin Pegerin? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I know who she is. I think. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, but uh, that's that's the end of our main podcast. We've been Soju Talk, your weekly shot at K-pop. I I'm Doug. Instagram.com slash ninety two Kim. We had Warren. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. We had Jenny. I'm Jenny. Instagram hl ninety one. Oh, we had Anita. <laughs> Hello, thank you for listening. And I've been Doug again, so Doug twice. All right, so um, we're on all the podcasting platforms. Uh, please check out our Instagram for updates. And please watch our YouTube because we're going to have a post-podcast um, Produce 48 talk right after this. So thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Thank Bye. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.